It's Saturday, June 3rd, 2023. A few things I want to talk about today, uh, very important. Before we do, please like this video, share this video, and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell notification down below so that you are alerted when the newest videos drop. But getting right into it today, uh, the president just signed the debt ceiling bill. And as he signed this, the U.S. national debt sitting at $31.8 trillion. We have $187 trillion uh, of unfunded liabilities, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, unfunded pensions. So over $200 trillion of debt. I believe this is going to add another $4 trillion uh, of debt in the next two years. And I'm sure that everybody out there is going to sleep much better at night knowing that we've avoided a default, even though we're already bankrupt and we are defaulting presently because we are broke. We are printing money out of thin air. But most people will think that uh, the danger is past us. Everything's OK. They signed the uh, debt ceiling bill. Everything's going to be OK. But it really isn't because we're going to print trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars out of thin air. And what is that going to do? It's going to devalue your dollar, your purchasing power, uh, your standard of living, and it's going to continue to add gasoline to this inflation fire that they cannot get a hold of. And I think no doubt you're going to see another rate hike uh, this June. I think you'll see another one in July. But ask yourself, is this really being fiscally responsible? Why can we not stop spending? We're going to continue to print money out of thin air. I mean, I wish I had a printing machine at my house that I could just print money out of thin air and just go buy stuff and be completely reckless. Is, is that how we should be acting as a nation? No, absolutely not. Nobody wants to feel the pain. Nobody wants to cut spending. And as long as we continue to think like that, we're going to continue going deeper into debt and we are going to default. Maybe uh, we're not going to default under this president. Maybe we default under the next president. Maybe we default, you know, uh, two presidents, three presidents from now. We are going to default, ladies and gentlemen. And in my opinion, we're defaulting right now. All you have to do is look out your window and see what is happening uh, to your cities, your states. Look at the vacant real estate. Look at the average household debt. Everybody's using credit cards now. We're nearly a trillion dollars in credit card debt in this nation. Household debt at an all-time high. Auto debt, all-time high. Student loan debt, all-time high. Uh, uh, medical bills, all-time high. It, it just goes on and on and on. While the average consumer is paying the highest interest rates ever before to borrow money. And it's going to go much higher because they're going to continue raising rates. So they're telling us they've saved this country from default. They're telling us that this is a victory. I think it is not a victory. Nobody wants to take responsibility. People uh, and politicians want to continue to spend. And unfortunately, the average household has the same mentality. They don't have a printing press. They have a credit card. And so they're going to keep using these credit cards until they're no longer usable, until the credit card company calls up and says, hey, you've reached your max, you're tapped out, no more. And then what do you do? Where do you turn to? The rest of the world is watching our financial recklessness take place right now. And this is why so many nations are going to run to other currencies. They're running to gold as I make this video, adding another $4 trillion of debt. Uh, this is just going to, as I said, pour more gasoline on the inflation fire. This is going to do more damage to the middle class, to the poor. But shifting gears here for a moment, article today on The Hedge, FHA floats new program to use taxpayer cash to buy mortgages of delinquent homeowners. This is unbelievable. And this is another example of why we're in so much trouble. So they're taxing homeowners already to pay for people who want to be homeowners that have insufficient credit or lower credit scores. And so the people who should be rewarded with a high credit score who bought homes are being penalized so they can pay for people with lower credit scores so that those people can buy a home. It makes no sense whatsoever. But the uh, payment supplemental partial claim, this is what it's called. This will allow homeowners experiencing a hardship who are unable to obtain a significant payment reduction with other loss mitigation options to keep their existing interest rate and reduce their monthly payment using funds from the FHA partial claim. The homeowners then pay back uh, the FHA when they sell or refi the home. 
So maybe next we'll just write a check for people and buy them a house. And then after that, maybe we'll write a check and buy them a Lambo. I mean, where does this end? This is complete insanity what is taking place. And this is why we're bankrupt. This is why we're going into the greatest depression the world has ever seen. And this is why inflation is going to go absolutely out of control. And this is going to hurt so many people. And people are asleep right now. They don't realize what is coming. Now, this morning, I was just out of curiosity. curiosity uh, I was just pulling up some statistics from Redfin today because people don't realize that we are on the cusp of a ver very major housing crisis. I looked at the uh, Redfin U.S. housing market uh, overview. Very, just a few things. You can check it out. There's a lot of information there. How accurate it is, how accurate the data is. I don't really know, but I'm going to go with what they have right here. Median sale price down 4.2% year over year. Homes sold 411,730. That is down 25.5% year over year. Mortgage rates have now surged past 7% for the first time since November. Anybody telling you that this is a great time to buy a home, I think is absolutely out of their mind or they're a real estate agent trying to get you to buy a home at the worst possible time. I've never met a real estate agent who ever said that, that, that there was a bad time to buy a home. It's always a great time. This, ladies and gentlemen, my humble opinion, is the worst possible time to be buying real estate or big ticket items. Home buyer housing payments are up 15.1% year over year. Think about that number. You really have to think, is it really worth buying a home right now? Remember, you've got the upkeep, you've got the insurance, um, payments are going through the roof. Uh, there's a lot to it. Taxes are going up. And to me right now, I'm sitting on the sidelines. I'm going to be patient. I'm waiting this out because I'm connecting the dots like so many of you where this is all going. There is no way home prices are going to continue going up. We're seeing them flatten, flatten off right now. Um, we are looking at home sales absolutely plunging. Pending sales are down 17% year over year. It, it, now this was very interesting on Redfin. Investor home purchases fell a record 49% year over year in the first quarter. Think about all that institutional money that is not in the housing market right now, that was in the housing market a year or two years ago, three years ago, that created all that FOMO, that created this massive housing bubble. 49% of investor home uh, of investor home purchases fell. That's incredible, year over year, down 49% year over year. So that is going to be letting air out of this bubble. We're not seeing nearly the amount of FOMO that we saw a couple years ago. That's because all of the big institutional players aren't in the game now. They're pulling out. What do they know that the average person doesn't? Why are they not in the market right now? Why are they pulling back? Why are nearly half uh, of the investors not purchasing homes right now? When we look at investment money in these markets right now, when we look at where they were from the previous peak, it's literally alarming. If you pull up some of the hottest housing markets in America, look at where the peak was to where it is right now as far as investor related. Investors in Phoenix, Arizona, investment money is down 65% from the peak. Uh, Anaheim, California, investor money down 32% from the peak. Atlanta, down 66%. Denver, down 50%. Fort Lauderdale, down 46.9%. Jacksonville, Florida, uh, investment money, down 56.6% from the peak. Las Vegas, down 60%. Nashville, Tennessee, down 60%. Phoenix, down 64%. The list goes on. Check it out. It goes on and on and on. Investors are not buying. And the big reason for that is the cap rates are plunging. And let's face it, many of these investors see the writing on the wall. They know what's coming and they're sitting on the sidelines like many of you and myself are doing. Uh, the average mortgage has doubled since 2020, 20, 2019. The average mortgage payment has literally doubled. So if you were paying uh, back in two mid 2019, you were paying $1,200 uh, for a mortgage. Right now, you'd be paying this year, you'd be paying about twenty-four dollars to $2,600 for that same mortgage. 
Inflation, mortgage rates, unemployment, qual uh, the lack of qualified buyers, this is all going to force prices down. I don't care what anybody is telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the writing is on the wall. I know people will write to me, especially if their wife is selling real estate or their real estate agent, they're gonna tell me how wrong I am. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, take a look at the sales data. It is absolutely plunging. Orange County, San Bernardino, Riverside, uh, Phoenix, Austin, Dallas, uh, you, you're, you continue to see sales plunging. You're seeing inventory skyrocketing. Days on market of these properties, days on market, these properties are getting stagnant. I'm looking at properties in the South. They're on the market 90 days, 100 days, 180 days, 200 days, 350 days, 400 days. Price reduction, price reduction, price reduction. They're not selling. Another article today coming from The Hedge. China's gold rush, G, prepares for worst case scenario. Question is, are you yourself preparing for the worst case scenario? Looks like China is. Things are really happening uh, behind the scenes. We're not being told about this. And while people are vaping, watching Netflix, playing golf today, uh, doing whatever they're doing, watching cartoons, um, they're not paying attention and they're gonna get absolutely obliterated here. Andrew McGuire. Uh, in the article delves into the unreported, de uh, unreported decision of the People's Bank of China to start preparing its 1.4 billion citizens for opting out of the U.S. dollar and into gold. This is going to have a catastrophic effect on your standard of living, uh, the standard of living of 99% of the people in this country. Uh, it's going to have a huge impact on the supply of gold and on the price of gold. Anybody that thinks that gold five years from now, 10 years from now is going to be less than it is today, I think, um, I think you need help. I really do. Uh, you look at the data. You look at what's being reported. You look at uh, the statistics. You look at what China's doing. Don't believe everything you hear, but start watching uh, what the central banks are doing, what China's doing. Not what you're being told with somebody wearing a $2,000 suit uh, on, a, on a financial channel. What are the financial banks doing? What is China doing? They are stockpiling this stuff. They can't get enough of it. And by doing this, you're getting out of the system. You know, people always ask for answers. Well, one thing I can say today is, if you're holding more gold and silver and less dollars, you're getting out of the system. And I believe that the people who have assets like gold, like silver, like land, uh, like income producing real estate, these people are going to survive. They're going to do quite well. But, you know, I'm starting to do more what China is doing. I'm doing more what the central banks are doing. Because things are collapsing right now. The world sees America collapsing right now. They see our financial system collapsing. They see our society collapsing. They see our morality collapsing, our spirituality collapsing. They're watching it all unfold. They don't want any part of this. They're going to the bricks. They're going to gold. And this decline is happening right before our very eyes. You don't have to uh, read about it. You don't have to take somebody's word for it. Just go out and drive around uh, your shopping malls. Drive out to your uh, urban cities. Uh, many of you just drive into your local uh, municipalities and you see the vacant buildings. You see the stores that have gone out of business. You're talking to your neighbors. You're talking to your family members. People you know and I know are out of work. Uh, we know and, and you know and I know people who are really struggling right now. Some of you know people who are homeless right now. We're going to know a lot more people who are going to be homeless in the next couple years. And unfortunately, it's going to be the poor that suffer first uh, with this demolition uh, of the U.S. economy. It's going to be the poor that suffer first, and more and more people are going to follow. And it's going to continue to, to just take more people down. It's going to drag more people down. But the most susceptible first are the poor. And then it's, you know, it's just going to take its tentacles and reach farther up, and then it's going to pull down the lower middle class, the middle class, the upper middle class, and uh, you're going to have either very, very rich and you're going to have a lot of poor people in America. And we're seeing that happen right now. So my advice today, isolate yourself from the system the best that you can. Not saying, you know, isolate, uh, you know, go off the grid and, and live in a mountain for the rest of your life. But don't keep all your money in a bank. If you don't have to keep your money in the bank, don't keep it in the bank. Get out of the system. Just have enough in there to pay your bills. Uh, you know, start using cash more uh, instead of a debit card or a credit card. Use cash. And don't keep all your money in the bank. Don't be dependent on the system. Again, 
the people who are the most dependent on the system are going to get crushed first. And that's typically the poor because the poor, well, what are they? They're waiting for that check every month. They're waiting for the WIC. They're waiting uh, for SNAP. They're waiting for the benefits. They're dependent on the system. And when the system says, hey, we're not going to give you as much or we're going to shut you off, that's what the system does. And there's no recourse. You're done. You starve. So break away from the system because the system is breaking apart right now. The system is failing and it's going to take a lot of people down with it. So the people who are still tied into the system are going to suffer the most because they're dependent on the system. The people who are less dependent on the system, they're not going to suffer as much. And if you're completely out of the system, you have your debts paid off, you have cash, you have gold, you have silver, you have some, some land. Um, you don't need the system. You are the system. You're going to, in my opinion, you're going you're, you're gonna to prosper. You're going to take advantage of some very, very bad uh, situations. And I don't want to see anybody suffer, uh, but there's going to be a lot of people suffering. And it is already too late for millions upon millions of people because they're so entrenched in the system, so dependent on the system, they can't get out of the system now. And that's why I, I say be out of the system, have some side hustles going on, uh, have have cash put away, have assets put away, have the mindset, have skills. The more skill sets you have, the less dependent you are on the system. So I'm going to leave it there today. Think about that. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. But uh, it's a beautiful, it's a pretty hot day today. It's getting up there, mid-90s today. I think I'm going to take a, a, a jump in the pool here and cool down, throw Nugget in the pool here, let her play. But, uh, you know, it's really... It's so sad. I don't really have the words to describe sometimes how I'm feeling with just how sad it is to watch what is happening. And it's going to be so sad to, to watch this happen to so many people because you're going to know people, I'm going to know people who are going to be absolutely uh, obliterated here very, very soon. And I don't know if it's a six months from now, a year from now, six years from now, but every day that we have every minute that we have, we should be doing something proactive to prepare for what is coming. How many of you, if the lights went out tomorrow, the bank shut down tomorrow, how many of you could survive for three days, five days, 10 days, 20 days, 30 days? Ask yourself that. If, if the power went down tomorrow, uh, grid down, cyber attack, whatever the case may be, uh, natural disaster, man-made disaster, how long could you go? How long could you go? I would say most people could probably go three days and that's it. I'd say the majority of this country goes three days and then they're in big trouble. Um, people physically would have a hard time dealing with it. Mentally, if they, if they can't access their phones or the internet, they would literally, they would literally be breaking down. Uh, and we know that nine meals away with, with people not eating, with nine meals, minus nine meals from people's diet, and you got chaos. You have chaos. And today where people can just, they can order their food on an app and have it delivered to their house. They don't even have to get off the couch. They just have it delivered to their house or, you know, literally every block there's fast food everywhere. It's just everywhere. Imagine if that all stopped, what would the average person do? They're, they would be out of their minds. They would be chaotic. Um, and everybody would be wanting to blame somebody. And at that point, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wake up one day and some huge event will have taken place. And most of the country is going to wonder what happened and they're going to wonder who they can blame. That's not my strategy. That's not your strategy. It's too late to blame. The only person you can blame at that point is the person in the mirror. At that time, it's a matter of how much cash can I get to? How much gold and silver can I get to? Are my debts paid off? How much food do I have? How much water do I have? How long can I last? And can I protect myself? That's the only questions I'll be asking myself. It's too late for the blame game. It doesn't matter uh, who did it, what politician, what bank, what country, it doesn't matter. Now it's a matter, can you survive? Can you get through it? Can you take care of your family? Can you feed your family? Can you protect your family? That's what you need to be asking yourself right now. If the lights go out, can you survive? God bless, have a great weekend, and I look forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon.